What's happening everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another live video. And I just checked my email and I got an email from a, I believe it's a girl. Um, I had to double check that, but I got an email from somebody who said that uh, she's brand new to selling on eBay and she has what appears to be a great opportunity. Again, she is brand new to selling on eBay. So essentially, the uh, the short of it is she was presented an opportunity where uh, somebody wants to give her thousands of free items, CDs, records, uh, electronics, music stuff, all different all different types of products for free, but she uh, has to give up fifty percent of of the income. So it's kind of like a consignment deal, and she wants to know. You know, I'm brand new to selling on eBay. Should I get into this? I've never sold on eBay before. Here's this guy who wants to give me all these totes, thousands of products, and all I have to do is just split split it 50-50. So should I do it? So I actually got a list of about six things that you should consider if you ever get um, presented with an opportunity like this because there's definitely some things that could hurt you. There's definitely some really good benefits and I kind of want to cover these. So first and foremost, I do want to say right now, if you're a brand new eBay seller, you're going to be faced with seller limits. So you're not going to be able to all of a sudden just list up thousands and thousands of items. You're going to be capped off in terms of how many products you can list and the overall amount of sales until you raise your seller limits. So this could take a couple of months to really get your seller limits raised. So if you're gonna get yourself into a situation like this, definitely you know, explain to the person, hey, I'm new to eBay. There's something called seller limits. It's gonna take some time for me to get you know, a bunch of these items listed up. So definitely consider that. Number two, if you're gonna get into some type of consignment relationship, you've gotta understand that there's going to be some refunds that come in. So if you're paying out this person every single week, there could be you know, a time where you have a $200 refund or a $50 refund that comes in. So you're gonna wanna nail down some policies in terms of when you are paying out this person. Because again, they gave you all these products, you've got a deal to split it 50-50. Um, you wanna make sure to protect yourself against uh, returns or refunds. So what I would do is I would set it for like 30 days or 60 days in terms of when you pay them out just because you don't want to get hurt with that. And if you do decide to pay them out sooner, you're going to have to create some type of spreadsheet or tracking system um, that allows you to track refunds and reimbursements so you don't get you know, stuck with that. So number one, seller limits, keep that in mind. Number two, refunds. Third off, and this is something really important, if you're going to have all this income going through your eBay account and through your PayPal account, you want to be careful when it comes to tax season, okay? Because if you have all this income on your books, the only way that you can get it off your books since you're paying this person out is to 1099 them, right? So 1099 is a way that you can take these expensive expenses off your books and essentially give it to them, right? So they can pay taxes on their income, their profit. So you are going to want to set up a, um, talk to your CPA or talk to your accountant about, you know, setting up a 1099 for them so you could take the expenses off of your books at the end of the year. Because if you bring in $100,000 and your profits, you know, maybe $60,000 on that and then you take 30 and, and they take 30, you're not going to be able to legally take that expense off unless you could prove it through a 1099. So you're going to want to set up a 1099 with this person so you're not paying taxes on their income. That's a big thing right there. Another thing, number four, before you get into this consignment relationship, you're brand new, you're going to want to get acquainted with fees and you're going to want to set up your relationships uh, your relationship in terms of all the terms, in terms of refunds, who's paying fees, are we splitting everything down the middle, right? Because you gotta understand, you're gonna get hit with eBay fees, you're gonna get hit with shipping fees, you're gonna get hit with PayPal fees, and there's also going to be some expenses along the lines of supplies, poly bags, poly mailers, tape. Who's gonna pay for all these supplies? Who's gonna pay for the shipping? Um, how are you gonna determine this? So um, there's a lot of different directions you can go. Um, in terms of this, a good spreadsheet can definitely help you out, but you're gonna wanna set all of this up. Who's paying for the expenses? Who's paying for the fees? Is it 50-50 down the middle with the income or 50-50 after um, 
you know, at the bottom, at the end of the day, profit, right? So you're going to want to definitely talk about that. Another thing you're going to want to ask yourself and consider before you get into this consignment relationship, again, for the people coming in, there was somebody who um, was presented an opportunity. They were a brand new eBay seller and somebody said, Hey, here, here's thousands of um, items. I want you to list them all up on eBay, start an account and we'll split everything down the middle. So, so far we've covered being aware of seller limits, refunds because if you're doing consignment you can get hurt with refunds if you've already paid this person out and now the money's getting pulled out of your account we talked about 1099ing your partner to make sure you can take the profits off your books we also talked about fees and now let's talk a little bit about valuing your time there's certain items that if you list on ebay you can sell for seven or eight or nine dollars but you've got to ask yourself is it worth your time now what do i mean because you, you might be thinking to yourself, of course it's worth my time. This inventory isn't costing me any money. Hey, what's up, Margaret? Good to see you, Texas Cal Treasures. Well, while these items might not be costing you any money since you're not buying it and you're just listing it, it does take time to photograph, list, ship, customer service, so on and so forth. And depending on the type of item, it's gonna take more or less time to ship, photograph, list, item specifics, all of that. So. I would really try to um, talk to this person about possibly lighting up the smalls and uh, only focusing on the items that are uh, worth your time. You don't want to get in the habit of listing hundreds and thousands of four or five dollar items because it's not going to be worth your time. So be sure to do your research before you get into this relationship, this consignment relationship to see, um, you know, are these items worth your time? If it's a bunch of two, three, four dollar junk, I wouldn't waste my time with it, right? Unless you could lot everything together. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to agree upon with this person you are consigning for is are they a stickler? Do they have these unrealistic standards in terms of, I wanna get 46 for this, I want 30 for that Mickey Mouse, I need to have 50 for that. If they're a stickler for price, if they're gonna be demanding of what they wanna get for these items, and let's be real, most people don't have an idea of what the value of an item is, right? Oh, I paid $400 for it. I want 300. Bro, it, it's only worth 30 bucks or whatever, right? Like things aren't worth what people think they're worth based on MSRP. A lot of things drop in value. Other things go up in value. So that's something to consider as well. And last but not least, um, I want to talk about storage. Are you going to have to run to this person's house and ship at their place? Or do you have to bring everything to your house and store it at your house and then turn your little apartment into a JC Penney warehouse, right? So that's another thing you're going to want to consider. It takes space to not only store your items, but to set up a shipping center. And then it's going to take time to drop things off at USPS or have them pick it up, so on and so forth, whatever you determine to do. So these are some things that you want to consider before you get into any type of consignment relationship. A couple red flags right off the bat um, that I, you know, I failed to mention in the beginning is this person's brand spanking new eBay is a lot more work than people think. There's gonna be some learning curves, there's gonna be some challenges, there's gonna be some issues uh, that come up. So I guess my advice would be, I would take things slow if you're a brand new eBay seller and someone presents you with thousands of items. I would take things slow. Also, I would like to know in the comments, what do you guys think? What advice would you give this new eBay seller who had someone approach them, a friend saying, here's thousands of items, list it, let's split it 50-50. Do you believe this 50-50 deal is fair? Or do you think that this girl who's listing it should get more? Because let's remember, she has to list these items, she has to ship these items, she's gonna have to deal with customer service, all the income's gonna be going through her, um, her name, right? And she's gonna have to 1099 this person, she's gonna be responsible for paying them out, she's gonna be dealing with refunds, returns, um, all different types of issues. What do you think about this 50-50 deal? I've never really done much consignment. I think I've done a couple in the day, um, but I've never really done much. Margaret says, no, 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 especially if they are friends, they won't be afterwards. Ooh, that's interesting. And why do you believe that? I'm, I'm interested. Marco says, not a good idea, especially without any experience selling on eBay. So I would like for you guys to elaborate. Um, Margaret, why do you believe that? You know, and I've heard the saying go, don't get into business with your friends, with your family. And you know, I agree. I try to stay away from uh, doing business with friends and family. Margaret says business and friendships doesn't always work. That's true because sometimes you've got to make tough business decisions 
um, that aren't emotional. And when you're with friends and family, things are always emotional. So business is not emotional. Friends and family is emotional. So when those things come together, um, this guy's like literally about to back into me. That scared me for a second. Um, sometimes things could go wrong, right? Rake and profit dies on camera, gets hit by a pickup truck. That would not be good. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys found value in this video. Kristen says, I would say no. Keep in mind, there must be a reason for the offer that is an uh, advantage to the one giving you the offer. What is in it for them? Exactly. Is it a bunch of junk they're trying to unload? Why aren't they just listing it? Because they know it's a crap load of work. Newton says, working fine for me and my brother. He supplies. Oh, there you go. So it looks like there's a... Uh, a brother-brother relationship working well. Margaret says, I hired a good friend to do some renovations on my house and they messed up a lot. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Tyler says, I actually got into reselling with consignment. Had someone help me who bought in huge quantities and, I'm trying to scroll down, and would lend me inventory, gave me shipping supplies. Interesting, interesting. So it looks like Tyler had some success with it. Hey, Rafi, what's up? Texas Gal Treasure says they're still friends, but not nearly as good. Yeah, that's rough. The Shamrock Pixie says, we thought about it, and then we tried it with a family member, and that was a mess, so we will not do it again. I would stay clear. So a lot of people, I'm not sure if uh, the person who emailed me, I wish I could read the email, but it's on my phone, and I'm live on my phone. I got to get a second phone just so I could read the emails uh, and go live on this phone. Um, I wish I could I could read the email. I wasn't sure if it was a friend or not. I'm assuming it's a friend. Kristen says, I have someone with tons of expensive antique tools, but because it's family, I said no, don't want to deal with the feedback. I get it, you know? I get it for sure. What's going to happen if you list a bunch of your family members' stuff and it doesn't go for as much and they're like, oh, you know, I paid a thousand bucks for all of it. It only sold for 200. What are you supposed to say? You know, I guess you could tell them the truth, but they might not be happy with that and they might feel that you shortchanged them. Or what if, you know, a month and a half later, there's a refund and the money gets pulled out of PayPal and then you said, hey, you know, Nancy, I, I need that money back. It was refunded. I'm not giving you that money back. I already, you know, the deal's done. And now there's that, you know, there's that emotional distress in between you two. So it's interesting. Uh, it looks like uh, this, this video took a little turn. Definitely some lessons learned here and, uh, you know, that's a, that's another good topic. Should you do business with your friends or family? Uh, Philomona or Phil, uh, Philemon. Sorry, I'm so bad at pronouncing these names. Uh, I apologize about that. You need your own personal eBay experience prior to consider doing consignment. Otherwise, you won't know what you're doing. That's a very interesting point. There's a lot to eBay that people don't know. Photography, shipping, item specifics, creating titles, um, dealing with returns, all different types of stuff. What happens if your PayPal account has uh, you know, an open case? How do you deal with that? Thriller Gorilla says, I would tell them to sub to your channel. Oh, there you go. Hoovy the Real is in the house. He is here. Oh man, flipping cents in $2 says, hey guys, slap that like button. I wanna know who is willing to slap that like button. Looks like we got a $5 super chat. I didn't see it come in. Where did it go? I see it up at the top. I'm on mobile, guys, so I apologize if for whoever left that super chat. I wish I could see who did. Where are you? I'm scrolling through my comments looking. Oh, that's too bad. I want to shout out whoever gave me that $5 super chat. I'm going to have to go through once I get on desktop and shout you out. I apologize about that. It's a little different on the um, on the mobile. Margaret, I appreciate you. And, uh, you know, you guys definitely check out Margaret, Texas Gal Treasures. She is an amazing resource and would love to have her on sometime to talk about jewelry, talk about Etsy. Great resource. Amazing woman. Appreciate you coming on into the comments. <laughs> Often nerf, ba nerf battle, my boys. That's great. Kevin says, I had a friend that wanted me to consign a bunch of video games. I sat her down and showed her all the numbers, fees, and shipping after that. The 6040 wasn't worth it to either of us. That's interesting. So I like what Kevin did. Kevin actually broke everything down to make sure that they were both on the same page and, uh, you know, set realistic expectations. And then they decided not to work together. So I like that, you know. I think being up front and breaking everything down, especially for somebody who doesn't understand eBay, maybe you're an intermediate eBay seller, maybe you have experience. To the general public, to the average person, they might think, oh, I sold a video game for 20, you know. We're going to split it 50-50 and get 10 bucks, but they don't understand that there's shipping fees, there's refunds that could happen, there's PayPal fees, eBay fees, 
shipping supplies, all that stuff. Thriller Gorilla says, you the man selling lots of Christmas uh, dandy toys. Awesome. Killing it with the toys. Steve Mason says, I just make my life easy and I buy it outright. I don't consign it at all. That's a very interesting, very, very interesting topic we could talk about. Should you consign or should you say it's mine and just buy it? You know, I think for the person who is brand new, who doesn't have any money, you know, they're not going to be able to buy it. Right. Um, but you maybe you could work out a deal. Um, you know, that's up to you, but definitely a good topic right there. Selling on eBay. Love the name, man. Love the keyword, you know, keyword hacking right there. You're an inspiration to all eBay sellers. Thank you from the UK. Hey, I appreciate you for sure. You know, just uh, sharing my two cents and trying to add value every day. So many people out there who, you know, they're struggling financially. And if they could just make an extra couple hundred bucks a month, it would change their life, right? And I think eBay can do that for you, but you got to learn how to do it. Hoover the Real says, I learned 94% of eBay from Raken. The other 6% came from Bonafide Hustler. Guess what? Bonafide Hustler is the one who got me into reselling. He was the first YouTube channel, one of the first YouTube channels I followed, and he was my inspiration for starting YouTube while I was working at the Cracker Barrel. He used to answer my questions on Facebook. This was way before like nobody was going live on YouTube. There was like no Facebook groups. Like There was like five YouTube channels. This was back in 2013. And I used to watch his videos and, um, I mean, he had like 200 subscribers, like the biggest YouTube subscriber, uh, YouTube channel had like 700 subscribers. It's crazy guys. How much this reselling community has changed. It's freaking insane. So insane. But, um, I used to post pictures on his Facebook page. It wasn't even, I don't even think it was like his, uh, actual, um, it wasn't even like a fan page. It was like his personal page. And I would like post on his timeline and he would respond back to me. But it's crazy, guys. Yeah, you know, reselling's changed my life. Allowed me to quit my job. Allowed me to move out of my parents' house. It's allowed me to travel the world, meet so many amazing people and help so many people. And, uh, you know, I really just want to serve and help people as much as possible because I'm just so grateful for this opportunity and all the doors that it's opened up to me. Thriller Gorilla says, I remember Bonafide showing us how to clean um, shoes in his front yard. I remember, <laughs> yeah, he used to put it on that little wooden table. I remember him, he was showing me how to clean a bike with a uh, bartender's friend. And he took this old um, beat up bike and he used the bartender's friend and cleaned it up and it looked beautiful. And then I was like, I gotta go find a bike. And then I did and I cleaned it and I was like, wow. And it was so much fun. <laughs> So Steve Henry says, I knocked out Floyd May Mayweather. Interesting. You must have a pretty crazy right hook. Della Nelson says, just bought Toy Guide, have lots to list. That's awesome. I want to know who got the Toy Guide. The Toy Guide actually just came off a pre-order today, and it's 100% released. It's, it's out there. So if you do get the Toy Guide, you'll get it immediately sent to your email. Plus, I've extended the offer um, for our bonus cheat sheet secret ebook with 10 bonus toy items for a couple more days. So check it out, rakingprofit.com slash toys. New guide, Toy Brand Profits has been launched. And uh, my good friend Vinny created mostly all the content and, and he's doing about three to 5,000 a month uh, selling used toys. So hopefully you guys are enjoying that. Movie The Real says, Steve was my main inspiration. Other shout outs of Bonafide Hustler, Redneck Picker, Flippin' Profits. Oh man, you guys remember Flippin' Profits? That guy was crazy. I love that guy. He used to have some of the funniest videos that I ever saw. I wish that I downloaded his old videos because he deleted them all off his channel. You guys, this guy named Flippin' Profit. He was the funniest, craziest son of a gun that I ever met. Who remembers Flippin' Profit? Who remembers? He had stopped making YouTube videos a couple years ago craziest guy ever but so smart and so talented and was super informative with his videos very educational how's the renting venture going i'm not sure what do you mean by renting uh kevin says i didn't get the toy guide but just listed 15 of my son's old blaze and monsters machines die cast trucks be getting offers all day um, that's great. Really cool. I have a 25 gallon tote of PJ mass stuff to list tonight. That's phenomenal. Awesome. Awesome. Nice work. Just reading through some of the comments. 
<laughs> Kevin says, I just sold that uh, Blaze trucks for fi for 55 bucks. Awesome. Steve says, you live in your car. That's not good. You shouldn't have quit your job. <laughs> I know, right? It seems like I live in my car. But I tell you right now, guys, the reason I'm always making videos in my car is because I'm always on the run, right? Whether it's running to the post office, I just dropped off stuff at the post office, or it's going to the gym, or it's going to the thrift stores. And I'm a busy guy. I'm running multiple businesses. So in order for me to be able to um, continue adding value, I just go live in my car and then it doesn't require me to have to edit videos. It doesn't require me to have to spend all this time doing all this stuff that really doesn't help you guys like editing and uploading. And so, you know, if I live in this car, then uh, so be it. <laughs> hey, Mighty Mushroom, $2. I want my $2. Hey, there you go. There's your $2. Josh says, tonight's task, listing a 55-gallon tote of 1982 Ninja Turtle stuff. Ooh, you are going to crush it with that. Wow, 1988 to 1992. I know the 88 stuff is the best. House of Mini Trucks has bought a small tote of early 90s McDonald's Barbie toys for $3 at auction this weekend. Sweet. I love how you guys are actually watching these videos and going out and applying it. You know, I was talking to Vinny who's my partner on Toy Brand Profits uh, earlier today and over the week. And I said, I really hope that people actually apply what we teach them. And um, he said to me, he's like, do people actually go out and take action on this stuff? And I said, you know, it's kind of sad. When I release courses and eBooks and I've talked to other course creators and stuff that have ran polls on their audience, most people don't. Most people actually, they'll get an ebook because they're excited and they'll look through a couple pages and then they'll stop. They'll move on to something else. It's the dabbler mentality. And I, you know, I'm really inspired to see that a lot of you guys have been taking action um, on the previous videos. And I know the guide was just released today. So if for anyone who got the guide, please go through it and take action. Study up on it. It's not a very sophisticated guide. It probably only takes about an hour or two to really go through, study each one, go into the soul listings. But that's the key, right? Right? That's the key to eBay. That's the key to Amazon. That's the key to a successful YouTube channel. It's consistently doing what you got to do, listing or creating videos. It's consistently sourcing. It's consistently improving. It's consistently learning and researching. So make sure that you go out there and you apply what you learn. Learning is great, but learning is never going to make you any money. Watching these videos, unfortunately, you know, I'll be the first one to say it. Watching a Rake and Profit YouTube video isn't going to make you money. You want to know what's going to make you money? It's actually taking that information and then applying it. Taking that information and buying stuff at the thrift store. Taking that information and listing it. It's taking that information, listing an item and getting a refund and then getting back up after you get hit and list another item. That's what's gonna make you money. I'm not gonna make you money, unfortunately. I could help you, I could try to inspire you, but the people out there who are quitting their jobs or are building an income stream of an extra 100 bucks, 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, they're not just sitting back passively learning because learning is only, people say, you know, what do they say? Uh, learning is learning is power or something like that. Uh, you know, learning and education isn't power, it's potential power. Um, you've gotta go and apply it and use it, right? So, Hoovy says, I read all the guides when I was in the green room member, really helped me take off. That's awesome. How long does the average person do retail arbitrage? Um, some people do it forever. Other people do it for about a year or two. Like if you're already a businessman or a businesswoman and you're looking to really scale and go full time, I see normally the, the average person does retail arbitrage thrifting for about two to three years and then they move on to like wholesale, private label, Shopify, or they go into some type of uh, more scalable business model, whether it's starting up a retail store or liquidation, um, or maybe they even go really hard into flea markets, buying up storage auctions and stuff like that. But at least a couple of years. But I find that once people get a taste of retail arbitrage and thrifting and eBay, they're hooked. When I got that first taste, I was hooked. It was like legal drug dealing, I swear. Um, and if you guys don't know my story, like I actually got in trouble for selling weed when I was 21. I'm 31 years old now. And I was doing that for a couple of years. I've been a hustler since you guys, before you guys knew me, whether it was hustling baseball cards, Pokemon cards, or hustling stuff I shouldn't have been hustling. Um, literally, selling on eBay is like, it's, it's kind of like legal drug dealing in a sense. Now the margins aren't as good on all items, but I'll tell you right now, like going to a thrift store and buying a book for like $2, and then flipping it for 100 on Amazon, 
that's crazy. Where, where else are you going to get margins like that, right? So uh, it's crazy. Once I got a taste of it, I was hooked. Brenda says, hey, Steve, I've watched many of your videos. First time catching you live. Always great content. Hey, Brenda, appreciate you. Much love. Where are you from in the country? Selling on eBay says, you still doing drop shipping? So I am doing drop shipping primarily on Shopify. One of my goals, and I am doing it on eBay as well. I have another account. It's a small account. One of my goals for 2019 is I do want to, um, I want to build up my eBay drop shipping. I also want to get into uh, Amazon drop shipping as well onto eBay. I've got some big plans. I don't want to talk too much about it right now, but I do have some big plans for drop shipping in 2019. I'm just so addicted to passive income. You know, I love selling on eBay. I love flipping stuff and retail arbitrage, but I'll be honest with you guys. I love digital products much better. I love not having to touch items. I love, you know, creating eBooks. I love creating YouTube videos. I love Kindle publishing. Um, you know, I love drop shipping. I would rather spend my time creating Facebook creatives, email marketing, selling products, um, drop shipping and having VAs help me and stuff versus having to actively go out and scale a physical business. So that's just one of my preferences. Um, maybe it's cause I, I'm past 30 years old now and I'm slowly getting a little tired. But, uh, I remember when I, when I first got started, I was like, I'm going to be thrifting forever. I love it. I never run out of energy. Now I've got so much going on. I'm working out all the time. It just takes a lot of energy to go to the thrift stores all the time and flea markets and garage sales. I'll always do it, but I want to scale um, my business is more towards the digital passive side. So that's one thing I like about drop shipping. Um, but there's a lot to know about drop shipping and there's a lot of ways to get in trouble and then there's a lot of ways to do it wrong. Um, so one of those things, TGS says it's fun, but does take a lot of work. Exactly. It is fun. It's way funner than drop shipping. I can promise you that. Thriller Gorilla says, how do you like being able to make an offer? to your watchers on eBay. How do you like being able to make an offer to your watchers on eBay? Is that available? I didn't even know. <laughs> I know that um, Poshmark has that, right? It's uh, offers to likers. Is that a new feature? <laughs> do I not know something? Oh, soon will be. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's really cool. So it is now. I didn't even know. That's awesome. I gotta go play with that. Do you recommend drop shipping for beginners that's just one month into selling? I mean, it's good for anybody, but you gotta learn how to do it the right way. Because if you're drop shipping incorrectly, you're gonna get kicked off eBay, and especially you're gonna get kicked off of Amazon, for sure. So be careful, I would go through a course. Um, there's some cheaper courses that you can go through on Udemy for like 10 bucks. I've gone through a couple of them. A lot of them are complete crap, I'll be honest. There's a few that are somewhat okay, but a little outdated. Uh, definitely check out some of my videos with Paul Lipsky. Uh, he does have a course. It is gonna cost you quite a bit more, so if you're new, um, you might wanna wait a little bit unless you've got the, uh, the resources to be able to go through that course. Um, but I would definitely go through some type of program drop shipping just because it is quite a, there's quite a bit to know and there's a lot of softwares to learn and stuff. Um, so that's kind of like my take on that. What's up, Jessica? I love it. It's definitely helping sales to pick up. That's great. So anyways, guys, I want to say, uh, you know, I appreciate you watching and just want to answer some of you guys' questions. I'm going to get going. It's getting a little dark here. I uh, just stopped at the post office to drop off a couple eBay items that sold and uh, wanted to bring you guys some value and answer that email that came in. If you guys have any questions for me, um, you know, drop a comment down below. And, uh, you know, I'll do my best to answer your question for you. But uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks, everyone who purchased the Toy Brand Profits Guide. You can check that out at rakeandprofit.com slash toys. And uh, that is available for purchase today. It'll be delivered to you. It's an ebook. Plus, there's a little 10, uh, a little bonus 10 item cheat sheet, secret cheat sheet that's uh, getting thrown in for the next couple of days. So you can check that out as well at rakeandprofit.com slash toys. And uh, with that being said, you guys have an amazing day. Smash that like button. Show some love. Let's get up to 100 likes right now. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.